Hi, Bobcats. In this lecture, we're going to introduce acids and bases. The objective here is to look at acids and bases in terms of their empirical properties. Empirical is just another word um, for experimental. So we're talking about um, things that can be observed, um, things that can be quantified, things that can be measured. So when you see empirical, it just just um, you can substitute the word experimental for that. In face to face classes, I like to start this topic by asking the class, did you eat or drink an acid today? And lots of people look um, very uncomfortable with this thought that, oh my gosh, they could have consumed acid. Um, but the bottom line is that uh, many, many of the foods that we consume contain acids. Um, if there's any tartness whatsoever to it, um, orange juice, soda, any kind of fruit, coffee, tea, you'll be drinking something that's acidic. When we start looking at chemicals through the lens of acids and bases, there's actually another category of compounds that naturally falls um, with this, which is salts. So to give you uh, some examples of things, this first diagram uh, it shows some things like um, vinegar and aspirin and some citrus fruit and some tomatoes and even vitamin C. And all of the substances that are shown in this first diagram are actually acids. In that second diagram, or the second photograph, the chemicals that are shown are bases. Some of them are weak bases, some of them are pretty strong bases, like the drain cleaner. Um, and then there's a third category of salt, um, which that third photograph is showing. Um, and those are some salts that you might have around the home. Um, that true blue aluminum sulfate is used as a fertilizer. Um, Epsom salt can be used for things like um, uh, soaking your feet in an Epsom salt bath. And then uh, that, that third piece there is just a regular salt like you would use in the kitchen for cooking. Now, the reason that these three things get talked about together is there's a very simple relationship among the three of them. And this relationship is that an acid reacts with a base to produce a salt. This type of chemical reaction is known as a neutralization reaction. Sometimes they'll use the full phrase acid-base neutralization reaction. And bases tend to have somewhat opposite experimental or empirical properties. Uh, for instance, acids will taste sour, think about something like a lemon, whereas bases taste bitter, think about certain herbs or something like the uh, quinine and tonic water or even something like baking soda, which is a very, very weak base. Um, there's a chemical called litmus, actually it's a plant uh, that gets ground up and then um, used as an acid base indicator and litmus will react with acids and turn red or it reacts with bases and it turns blue. Uh, acids and bases will react with each other but beyond that acids will react with metals and dissolve them so this is why you don't want something like drain cleaner made out of an acid because it'll dissolve your pipes. Um, bases, on the other hand, do a pretty good job at dissolving up the types of things that clog drains, like um, grease and hair and things like that, um, because they do a reaction called a saponification reaction, um, and they, they'll do that same reaction with even the fats in your skin. So if you get base on you, it's going to very quickly feel slippery, um, as it's actually generating soap um, with the substance substances that it encounters. Lots of other chemicals can be used as acid base indicators even beyond litmus. Some of them are more useful than others. Uh, for instance, even tea can be used as an acid base indicator. If you've ever brewed a nice strong cup of hot tea and then squeezed a lemon into it, you'll notice that the color lightens up quite a bit. 
Um, there are some compounds in tea that go from um, dark brown to lighter brown once they um, get even more acidic. Um, some other indicators that you'll find in naturally occurring substances, um, the flowers that are shown in this diagram are hydrangeas, and I don't recall seeing a lot of hydrangeas except in florist shops in central Texas. Um, but I was traveling one time up in the DC area and these were just growing everywhere in people's yards and they're just absolutely beautiful. Um, when hydrangeas are planted in acidic soil, the flowers on the plant turn blue. And when hydrangeas are planted in basic soil, their flowers will turn pink. So there are compounds in the hydrangeas that are acid-base indicators. Um, they belong to a family of compounds that are known as anthocyanins. Another great example of these anthocyanins is red cabbage or purple cabbage. And one of the cool things about the purple cabbage is that you can um, boil the cabbage and extract this uh, juice from the cabbage and then use that as an acid base indicator. Um, the uh, compounds that are shown here in these test tubes run from way over here on the left where it's very acidic uh, to way over there on the right. Uh, the test tube um, over here that's this uh, dark olive green color, that's going to be a very basic solution. So we're running the whole pH scale. We'll learn much more about the pH scale in a later presentation. So our objective was to introduce some of the empirical properties of acids and bases. In the upcoming uh, presentations, we will be looking at things like uh, the formulas and the particles that make up acids and bases, as well as things like the pH scale.